Hello Internet, I am Xenon and welcome back to the Terrascape Feed the Beast server. Now, at the end of last episode, for those who uh, watched all the way to the end, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I uh, showed down here is a nuclear reactor. <laughs> last episode it was surrounded by water, it no longer is, so I'll explain that in a second. Uh, but all these components for the nuclear reactor are in here, so it goes from, well there's some of it there, it goes from there all the way down to here, that was an extra. And it took quite a lot to make, so if we look at say this component heat vent, let's have a look. Uh, oh, component heat vent, so that thing there takes, you know, some tin, iron, and a heat vent, which you know refined iron and that, no worries. Heat exchanger, heat exchanger, dense copper, and yeah, fair enough. I think there's only one of those. Mm -hmm. Overclocked heat vent. There's a lot more of those than the others. Let's have a look what that takes. Uh, there it is. Take some gold. Uh, heat vent takes some dense copper. Takes the same as an all heat vent there. And then we have these uh, quad uranium cells. So a quad uranium cell takes double uranium cells plus three dense copper. Double uranium cell takes two uranium cells plus some dense copper. And a normal uranium cell is just empty cell and refined uranium, which you get from macerating uranium ore and then compressing it. So you probably notice a bit of a recurring theme of that. There was some dense copper. Now each dense copper is eight or is it? No, I think it's eight. Yeah, it's eight uh, copper in a compressor. I had to use a lot of it. Uh, it actually came down to about a thousand, just below a thousand, so like nine hundred and odd uh, copper. <laughs> so much. It's nuts. Oh, uh, and then I think the um, reactor chambers also used copper. Yeah, yeah, dense copper. I had to make six of those. <laughs> So that was a lot of copper. I still have more because my, um, what should we call it? My quarry has been working overtime for me. <laughs> but down here, if I open this up, it's got a very small inventory. Uh, to enlarge that, what I do is stick these reactor chambers on it. I'm holding shift while I do this, if you're wondering. And last one, I don't think it matters. There you go, which way I face. So there we go. We have that in there, take this chip back off so I can jump up. And now suddenly there's a much bigger inventory size, that's like a size of a single chest. Now I need to put this back on. <laughs> I should just fix that step really. <laughs> uh, I should probably mention as well that this here is reinforced stone. That's probably why it, uh, that's why it looks a bit different. Uh, where did I make that? I made this ages ago. I think that, oh yeah, advanced alloy and just stone. Fast alloys are just a mix of uh, refined iron, bronze, and tin. And I can use aluminium in that now because I've got that. But yeah. Next step, now that I've got all those chambers down there, is to arrange all of these components and the uranium cells in the correct manner to avoid the thing blowing up. Uh, I've gone with a Mark 1 design. It will produce uh, 82 million uh, EU over like two and a half hours. That's how long the uh, uranium cells take to decay fully, and it dissipates as much heat as it generates. So what that means is that you let, if you let this thing here get too hot, then you essentially melt down the reactor and it blows up. <laughs> I've got a double layer thick of this stuff going up upwards, so it protects my uh, base, sort of, and then single layer everywhere else. And I think this is meant to change the blast radius to about five blocks. So having two layers thick should mean about zero and uh, two five blocks from 30, that is. So, And then this will come out, you know, like five blocks out here and should be reasonably safe if this thing ever does blow up, but it won't because I'm going with a safe Mark 1 design. They're, they've got like different rankings based on how much energy they produce and how long, how many cycles they last, I think, before they blow up if you don't replace components or stop them. <laughs> And so I've gone for basically the, the ideal safe one. You can make the higher one safe using redstone timers, but I don't trust those because if you leave a chunk 
Um, unload a chunk with a repeater in it. The repeaters can stuff up and cause weird things to happen in redstone circuits, especially if it involves a clock. So yeah, Mark 1 design for me. Now I'm going to arrange all of this in there because I have to refer to a website. I'll do that off camera in a second. And then I'll explain what these other weird components are all for. So, see you in a second. Okay, we are back. So, now in here I've got this all arranged. So there's seven quad uranium cells. All these overclocked heat vents and component heat vents. And there's one heat exchanger. So they all do various different things. Uh, I haven't really <laughs> bothered to figure out how this all works. I just use the design. Because... Why not? I'm not going to make my own. It'll probably blow up. But, in here, like I mentioned, I've got all these other weird little components. Uh, I think I also need that. Maybe these. Maybe that. I can't remember. <laughs> but, I mentioned uh, just before, this setup's also changed, I'll get to that. <laughs> that uh, this thing will produce 82 million uh, EU over the, the cycle of like two and a half hours while these things degrade to nothing. And while it does that, it generates no excess heat. And I mentioned that I had water in here before, and now it's gone. It's because with these reactor chambers on it, they shield the reactor from any outside influence of water and lava, so the water's pointless. And that's why it has to dissipate all the heat it generates just in the components. But doing that means I never have to replace the components, only the uh, uranium. Uh, and yeah, generate a lot of power. So if we look at the power storage, there's an MFSU. This thing here that you make using this stuff uh, will store, I think it's 10 million uh, EU. So I've got the MFE, that's 600,000. So 10 million for the MS MFSU. That sounds, I don't know, reasonable, but I'm generating 82 million means I'm going to need nine of them if I want to capture all that energy. And then if I run the thing again, I'm going to need another nine, unless I manage to use up all of it first and then run it. So I'm going to need a lot of these MFSUs. Or in Greg Tech, there's this thing called an adjustable energy storage unit that you make like that. This thing stores 100 million. <laughs> EU, so that's 10 of the MFSUs. Takes these Lapatronic Energy Crystals, fair enough, that takes Iridium uh, Energy Orbs. Uh, takes Iridium Plate in the middle, uh, it's easy enough to make, just a diamond, some Iridium, I've got lots of Iridium. And then Lapatron Crystals, easy enough to make, these things take a diamond and a whole bunch of redstone, or I can do it using a sapphire, which is how I did it, and just some circuits, top and bottom lapis, fairly easy. Then there's also this thing called a Greg Tech Computer Cube. Have a look what that takes. Okay, that, that doesn't look too harsh. Advanced Machine Block, Energy Flow Circuit. What's this? Ah, oh, it's some more of those crystals, Radium Plate, and then some funky things going around at the corners. So there's Advanced Energy, or I can use these Electron Tubes. Fair enough, I could ignore these square box things and just use circuits or the tubes because I have plenty of those um, tubes that I'm making this thing, the thermionic fabricator. Make it easy if I just do five diamond, two redstone. Fair enough, those those are easy enough to make. They cost some resources, but hey, this thing stores 100 million energy. Then there's this. <laughs> I get four of these for crafting this. Uh, but it takes a, a data storage unit, takes eight of those, which is a lot of emeralds around. I can do it around advanced circuit, fair enough. I, I don't have emeralds. Uh, so, hey, what was the other thing we saw in here that I can... Oh, these, these square, blocky, autarchic gate things. So let, let's click on one of those. Uh, shapeless crafting takes a gate that's not going to give me anything. Assembly table. Oh, here we go. So I put it in assembly table with a diamond gate, pulsating chipset, and some other stuff. I make the normal gate like that. These... that 160,000 there, that, uh, that's Minecraft jewels. Have I ever mentioned that these engines I'm using generate four a tick? This this that thing just said it takes 160,000. That's a fair amount of time. <laughs> you saw me using this uh, last episode to make what was it? 
Oh, it was a small little autarchic control for the bees. <laughs> yeah, I, I needed a lot more than that because if I look in here, oops, wrong thing. Look in here, this thing here needs eight of them, but then this thing here also needs uh, four of them plus four tubes or whatever. And plus more iridium. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I've got five lasers here hooked up to five engines, gets it a bit faster. If I tell it to do something, you can see red lasers popping out everywhere. Went to yellow because it had a little bit of energy. But yeah, this starts off shooting red lasers, then it works itself up through yellow, green, and then blue is the highest efficiency state, just meaning that these are all getting uh, four megajoules a tick like they're meant to for max power. Let me get that one off. Yeah, I don't need it on. No, I don't. Oh, good. So, yeah, that's why I kind of rearranged the setup a bit, got myself two magma crucibles in here, and did all of that. <laughs> I've also started uh, putting bauxite and stuff in centrifuge to generate titanium, and I also did it same thing with ruby dust, so I've got myself a bunch of chrome and titanium. That's for the matter fabricator that I'm working towards. But for now, I can make one of these. So I've got all of those already. Oops. See, so yeah, I got all of those. Now I've got data control units and energy flow circuits. So, wrong thing again. That's the data orb, that's an energy. So, I need to make these data orbs, which I make with the data control circuit and then surround it by those gates. So, let's do that. Data control, and then eight of these, and hopefully this thing works. Yes, and then I get four of those. And then I can make a whole bunch more using those. So, we just have to finish making this now. Chuck that in the middle. I didn't bring the glass out. Silly me. Uh, so yeah, chuck that in the middle. <laughs> Do that. Then we've got these data orbs. Got a couple of those. Bam. Got us a Greg Tech computer tube. Computer cube. Then we do that. Put these around. And before you know it, we have ourselves an adjustable energy storage unit, otherwise known as an e AESU. Boom. 10 MF SUs in one. And I didn't need these di diamantine things out. And then as you can see, I've still got leftovers, so it'll be much easier to make the second and whatever else um, AESUs than it was to make the first. And plus, I've already got a whole bunch of ender pearls now. Those were a pain in the butt to farm. Are these. What's going on here? You should be working. Why are you getting zero? Why? What? That is weird. <laughs> Things stop working. Uh, oh, I had this happen once before. I just had to break the lasers and replace them. Stuff it. <laughs> I'll leave it for now. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Now, what I need is some stuff to get the energy out of this. So to turn the reactor on, you need a redstone signal, which I shall give it from a lever. Cobble, there we go. And then I've got plenty of wood on me, that's fine. I can make torches and whatever else I need. And then I also need some cables to get the signal out. So if I have a look at glass fiber, those are the best of the standard stuff, so it takes diamond. If I do silver in the middle, I get six instead, so we'll do that. So, give me a bunch of glass. About half of that. Then diamonds. Got lots of diamonds. Uh, silver. Okay. So we go bada bing, bada boom. And then split this around. Kind of randomly. Give me some of that. That should be more than enough. So, Signal needs to come out from the reactor. Uh, well, the the cable and stuff needs to go out from the reactor and into the adjustable energy storage unit. So let's get working on that. Unfortunately, I have to put two holes in the floor, and this this stuff takes a while to dig through. <laughs> so you can see. Bunk. Now the reason I have to dig two holes is because I need a redstone signal to come in and I need the glass fiber cables to go out. 
So I can't do that in one hole because you can't power that and with a redstone torch and then have the other thing going out at the same time. Does not work, my friends. Does not work. Trust me, I've tried in creative for a fair while to find some kind of solution. Now, we go and figure out how we're going to power this. I think if I go there. So yeah, have redstone there going to cobble will be fine. Oh block, so then I have a torch on it. Correct. <laughs> I'll light that down. Ignore my portal gun, it's noisy. Then I kinda want this to go outside. I'm gonna need a repeater on here somewhere. But in a ah, in conjunction with that we have the glass cable coming down and out as well. Uh, deep hole. Try to do this quickly, because I know it's kind of boring digging holes and stuff. But I wanted to show you what was involved in getting this thing up and running. It's not just as simple as uh, whacking all the stuff in and sticking a wire there. Yeah, I think I'll use that lever there, right next to the door <laughs> to power it. <laughs> now when the redstone signal have to go too far after all. Uh, give me the cobble. So it needs to come up. I want it to go to that block there. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, so now when I hit that lever, it will activate this. So I want to invert this signal. You'll see why in a second. And I need two torches. I got four. Okay, so, yep, do that. Because I want it so if the lever uh, is broken, this thing doesn't get powered, it goes off. Kind of bad to um, reverse redstone it, having things turn on when the signal turns off. And then I do that, and the torch turns off. Okay, now I can do this. So the glass cable is much easier to wire around. Because I can go straight up, for example. Uh, I can box myself in so I can't escape. That's always fun. Uh, let's not go there. Come up. And go. No place there? There we go. So, I'll go one below the floor. And then I'll have the. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to want the final resting place of this thing to be. I figured down here is good enough for now. So I'll bring this all the way out here. And then I'm going to need to send power up at some stage, so I'll probably end up moving this. But that's not a problem. Whack it there. Now this thing has the three dots. I believe that's the output. Oh, I want to remove this now. I don't want to break it. Oh. <laughs> uh. If you break these things with the wrong tool, then uh, quite often, just make sure this is in lossless mode. There we go. Quite often, uh, oh, I can do it like that. There we go. Yeah, quite often it will just break them into the lesser components that it took to make the things. So, yeah. I even face that backwards and just have the power going out through the wall or something, I don't know. I shall figure it out at a later stage. Because right now, I want to get this thing working. Okay. So the other thing about these adjustable energy storage unit. Okay, it's got my armor there automatically. That's weird. I guess I can take it. Yeah. Huh, that's handy. Uh, I can set how much I want the output to be. And please excuse that croaking in the background. It's a frog. <laughs> uh, so it can take uh, 2048 EU per tick in. That's what the nuclear reactor outputs, uh, and it sends 512 out, but I can adjust this. So you can see I can click these buttons, I can change that all the way down to 32 if I want. For now I'll leave it as 512. And basically that means I can set the output of this to what I want, medium or low voltage, and I will not need a transformer, which is awesome, saving on components already. Okay, so with this hole in the floor, let's get the baby started. And I did that one block too low. 
think if I do that, it still doesn't work. Oh my god. How did I do this in creative then? So I had that up. And then I only had to hold two. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> uh, Zen fail. <laughs> and I can't get through the door. I hate this jetpack. Sometimes I can jump it if I just tap it like that, and sometimes it won't work. Okay, I shall be right back. I'll fix this quickly and see you in a second. Okay, welcome back. So, in creative, I had the floor at the wrong height. It was up on the height where there's torches. So, it's different to that, but on the plus side, I can put another block there so there's only a single hole going down. The other thing blows up, I lose all my cable and stuff. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so, now let's fire this thing up on. Now these, you can see, all have green bars suddenly and that's because they're being used. If we walk over here, power going up. Nice. So it's already at 200 odd thousand. That's like a third of my maximum storage at the moment. Now it's at half. Yeah, this, this thing's pretty quick. 2048 EU per tick going into it. So that's a lot. That's, that's a fair bit. That will keep me going uh, in the short term, because uh, if you've noticed, I've got a nano suit and helming leggings and stuff on, got myself a chainsaw, mine laser drill, electric wrench. You know, I've been doing some upgrades, upgraded a whole bunch of equipment out here. I have the singularity compressor, centrifuge extractor, re remacerator, induction furnace. So I've been keeping up with the times, but I need better armor. So I'm going for quantum suit next, and takes a fair bit of power to charge it. This is already at a million. Gosh. <laughs> Tenth of the way to powering an MFSU. You can see it's got this little blue line that'll fill up to show the capacity too. But yeah, I'll leave that door closed just in case. But for, uh, you know, just to stop people worrying, yeah, these things aren't losing any health. And I'll come back and check it periodically to make sure. But yeah, it's safe. I can leave this running and not worry about it. Yeah, next time uh, we'll get some quantum suit stuff going on, I'll just show you it, and then I'll show you why I'd need it. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.